Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. Today we're looking at Action Comics number 584, starring Superman and the Teen Titans by legendary comic creator John Byrne. I'm super excited to bring this to you. I love this comic book so much. Uh, anyway, so hit subscribe and like while I cue the intro and I'll be right back. It's Troy TV. All right, here we go. I remember being so super excited, no pun intended, for this. John Byrne was leaving Marvel, heaven for fend. Um, you know, it, it was before the internet, so we just sort of took whatever they gave us and didn't complain about it. I guess we could write a letter and it would show up two or three months later in a comic book. But by then, you know, whatever. I think that's the problem with the in internet. And I just realized that filming this is like the impulse just is horrifying because if you should, you should just stop and count to 10 before you like post anything or comment on anything. Remember that old commercial where they're like, stop and count to 10. And like, honestly, you need to calm your ass down if you're like going to freak out. <clears throat> so, um, John Byrne went from Marvel to DC famously to revamp Superman after Crisis on Infinite Earths. Um, his initial plan, according to him, um, and I may not be 100% on this, uh, I pretty much think I am, but as usual, this is my experience with these comics, and it's an opinion, not a doctrine. So, buyer beware. Anyway, when I saw the preview for this, I'm a huge, like, John Byrne and George Perez are, like, my spirit animals. I love them. Like, they're the two biggest artistic influences on me. They're probably the two main reasons I love comic books and comic book art so much. So when John Byrne went to DC to do Superman and decided to cast the frickin' Teen Titans in his first issue of Action Comics, I lost my damn mind. Now, at the time, I didn't know it, but this is an homage cover. It's either an action issue or a Superman issue from the past, and, like, this lame guy on crutches is the only one who can save them. So, um, gorgeous cover, love it. Donna Troy, best costume. It's funny because John Byrne loves Jean Grey, clearly. He's, like, exploiting the F out of her and his X-Men fan fiction right now. What? John Byrne, X-Men fan fiction? Yes. If you go to his forum, burnrobotics.com, and go to the fan fiction section, you can see the fan fiction X-Men comic book he's been working on for two years. And it's heavily, it's like what would have happened if Jean Grey would have lived or whatever. And and John Byrne had not left the X-Men. So it's a lot of fun. Totally worth checking out. Completely free. I highly recommend it. Anyway, I would say that Donna Troy is definitely the DC version of Jean Grey because her history, her origin is so convoluted, so messed up. She's been killed. She's been brought back. She's been dragged through the mire. And poor Donna Troy. Anyway, love this gorgeous cover by John Byrne and Dick Giordano. Um, anyone who watches my channel knows that I am not a fan of Dick Giordano's inks, especially on John Byrne. And then you throw in the biggest screw over ever. And this is like a quasi urban myth. I don't know like the entire details of it, but um, basically, one of the big things about getting John Byrne to go to DC and be doing Superman is he really wanted Dick Giordano to ink him. And they promised him Dick Giordano, but Dick's getting on in years. He's not doing as much art. And supposedly he's heavily reliant on assistance and sort of like the house style, if you will, like, or a studio. Like a lot of artists, um, not a lot, but a few, have been known to sort of, you know, hire a bunch of assistants and artists under them to do backgrounds and finishes and blah, blah, blah. And apparently that's kind of what happened with Dick Giordano. 
And I feel, because John Byrne, as he usually does, felt screwed over by DC and the whole uh, Superman thing, and we'll get to that in a second. But I feel like super underhanded if you're going to promise John Byrne Dick Giordano and then just give him maybe Dick doing the figure inks and then some assistant doing the backgrounds or something. Now, I do have to say, I do have the omnibus, a uh, couple of the hard trade, uh, hardcover trade backs of the John Bird Superman, and the art does look much better with better printing, but I'm used to like a really gorgeously polished, highly detailed, like Terry Austin inking burn, or even burn sort of sketchy, but consistent and obviously faithful to his own work inking himself. And Dick Giordano just not, just didn't do it for me. I'm sorry. And he does it for so many people. People love him. They think he's fantastic. But I notice things instantly. I just feel like some of it just looks a little sloppy and rushed and not as, I don't know, um, defined as it could be. Like this panel here. Like, look at these faces. For lack of a better word, I think they look a little bloopy and shadowy. I mean, this could easily have been done by Frank Miller here. Not that there's anything wrong with that. You know, Frank Miller's awesome and great and even friends with John Byrne. But John Byrne has a certain aesthetic and style that you just want. And doesn't he draw a gorgeous Superman? That makes me so happy to see that. It really does. Oh my God, Cyborg with this thousand decibels of white light that was sort of like the, you know how X-Men always had their tropes with like, I'm, I'm the best there is at what I do and Phoenix is, I am fire, I am something incarnate, blah, 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 whatever. And Cyborg was always going on about his bazillion decibels of white light. So did he actually say it? I don't see that he did. Either way, I love Cyborg. Cyborg's cool. Very cool to see John Byrne drawing him. It's funny, like, I feel like they think the headband made him look stupid, and then the only thing they did to make him not look stupid was to get rid of the headband. But I never had a problem with the headband. I mean, he's a cyborg. He's sort of, like, split up, like, half machine, half human. So he's got a half face and a half metal face, and something's got to hold it on, and that was doing it. This is such a great shot of Superman, like total alpha male here. Like obviously he is being possessed by that dude on the cover with the crutches because Superman would never flex like that and just be a total machismo butthole, I don't feel. I mean, I could be wrong, who knows, whatever. Nobody's asking me to write Superman these days. I feel like this is John Burns' like, uh, like b way of branding. Is this the Daily Planet? where he did like this sort of weird like plant-like pattern on the windows. I don't know. I was never like overly excited about that. Oh my God, Donna Troy, here she is. I have to say, and I hate to criticize Byrne because I love Byrne so much, but oh my God, way to take liberties with Titan's Towers. Titan's Tower, like it should be like twice as tall, half as thick like that just does not look like titan's tower to me like they couldn't even do like the window over here i don't know it looks like a compound it's not great but once again it's john byrne drawing the teen titans so i'm super excited about that they seem to be in character gar's like a smart ass and a you know a pervy latch and donna gets on the horn and realize what's up what's up gar turns into an elephant blah 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 Spoilers, spoilers. I love Donna Troy. I mean, she is one of the most underserved characters in the DC universe. Maybe that serves her though. You know what I mean? Like maybe if they did right by her, people wouldn't care, but she's been so screwed over for so long that people are just kind of like in this odd place of worship with her. I love this. This reminds me of something I've said before. It's like when you have a character like Vision or Cyborg, it's like just beat them up, rip off their leg. I mean, you wouldn't do that to Storm or Rogue, you know, because they have like a flesh leg. But since it's Cyborg and it's replaceable, like, are you not careful with your limbs? Why do you keep losing your limbs and like getting strung up and being, I don't know, you know, Jericho. Great to see John Byrne's version of Jericho. But once again, I don't know, you guys are probably like loving and just like glowing in this uh, 
Dick Giordano angst, but I think, I think it looks like he took like a pastel crayon and like broke it and then just started like going like this to ink the pages. That's how I feel about Dick Giordano's inks. And I know you all want to hate me and kill me, but it's just an opinion. It's like, it's just my aesthetic. It just doesn't work with for me. Like maybe if I would have been introduced to Burns' work via Giordano's inks, I would feel better about it, but I just don't. Not crazy. And there's tons of action in here. I love it. Everything is like so talking heads now, but back in the day, superhero action stories, they actually had to have like conflict and action and people fighting. There's the Jericho effect. Actually, that's so cool. Like the concept of Jericho taking over Superman, like WTH, like what the heck, right? And then, but Superman's already has someone else inside him. And it's that that bitter crippled guy on crutches, Stephen Hawking has possessed Superman and he's running amok with his body and beating up the Teen Titans. Look how big um, Burn makes Donna stars compared to the way George Perez does them. And it's funny because George or Burn's such a like, uh, uh, like a purist when it comes to designs and history and comic. You know, he likes to be pure to them before he like rips it asunder and tra changes everything. But I feel like Donna's stars were bigger before George got a hold of her. And that might be him doing that. I don't know. Obviously absent, no Robin, no Starfire. I'm like, where the heck are you? I mean, we need John Byrne drawing Starfire. And he did eventually draw her, so it's forgivable. But this was a fun story. This is John Byrne's introduction to action comics. It's amazing. Guest starring the Teen Titans. So cool. Anyway, thanks for watching. Check this out. If you are unfamiliar with John Byrne's run on Action Comics, you need to get it. It was like a teen book and it was so much fun. He did so many issues and it was so great and I loved it. Uh, subscribe to my channel, hit like, share my content, and I'll bring you some more later. Thanks guys.